the Lunar New Year holiday has just wrapped up, which means four days of lying around, constantly eating with your family and in-laws has just passed. So in that time of just sitting around, I've had a lot of time to think, and what I've been thinking about, well, is the concept of freedom, which is sometimes connected to the, uh, the concept of player agency. So let's take a look at some extremes of storytelling styles. Now they might be common, but from a certain point of view these are extreme examples. And I'm not going to cite any particular game, just a method of presenting a session. So extreme case number one. There is a planned story. This could be uh, a purchased adventure or something that the, the game master has written, but there is a story. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And outside of that story, there's nothing. So if the players choose not to make the obvious conclusions or choose not to follow the obvious next step, then the adventure, quote, derails. Right? We're talking about the, the classic railroading style here, which does have a purpose. It's telling a particular story or providing a particular experience for a group of players. That experience may be just simply to complete the adventure. That could be the, the entirety of the goal. Or something else. <laughs> anyway, extreme number one, the railroad. Extreme number two, of course, would be the opposite. So what is the opposite of the railroad? Well, nothing is planned. Everything is decided at the moment, seat of the pants. And I suppose the most extreme version of this would be the randomly generated adventure where the, the game master might have a series of charts or a series of, of die rolls prepared in order to completely randomly generate an experience. So in the fantasy milieu, this might be a random dungeon where you literally roll if there's a left turn or a right turn or, or what have you, wandering monsters and all of that stuff. And in a modern game, well, that would be a little harder, <laughs> lacking dungeons, but you get the point. Completely freeform. So these are the two extremes. In the middle would be what? Partially planned and partially free. This might be something which I described in my series on simulation as where the non-player characters have been created and established and they will continue on a set course that makes sense according to their character and the events of the world once set in motion will continue on unless the players interrupt them and then it will be decided how that interruption will proceed. The players are completely free to interact with the world in any way they wish, and the game master is completely free to advance the timeline of the world according to what makes sense to the characters. That's one example of that. Another example might be a genre where there's a lot of uh, freeform ideas, but certain types of experiences should happen, such as the villain coming back for, <laughs> for one last climatic battle even though he's dead, uh, or the idea from film, film noir. Right? If you run into plot trouble, somebody kicks in the door and starts shooting. Right? So these certain events, kidnappings or, or uh, drive-by shootings or, or whatever, these events happen, and then in retrospect the story makes sense afterward. It's a, the human mind has a tremendous capacity to piece things together and see patterns even if there wasn't one. So with these three points on the graph, or these three extreme, the middle one not really being an extreme, but it just feels good to say extreme, <laughs> with these three points on the storytelling graph, where do you fall? What is your, what is your instinct, or what is your baseline of being a game master or being a player, where do you fit on that spectrum for enjoyment 
And where do you think, here's the most important question, where do you think the most freedom lies?